Hey everyone, thanks for checking out another video. As you probably read in the description, this will be an updated walk around video of the Allo Cab Canopy Camper. I did feel the last video I posted was a bit rushed and I didn't get a chance to cover all the things that I really wanted to. So in this video, I do plan on taking things a bit slower and describing the setup in more detail. Some of the stuff I'm gonna be going over will be a bit of a rehash, but I will also go over some of the new stuff I've added to the camper setup as well. Since the last video, I have added some useful items that may be informative for some of you looking to do your own canopy campers, as well as those looking for a bit more information on trying to decide between which camper setup to go with. So with all that said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'd like to start off with is how to deploy the canopy camper. There are two lockable latches on the left and right side of the camper. Once you disengage the latches, you push up on the main handle of the camper. It does take a bit of initial force to engage the gas springs, but once they're engaged, it should lift up by itself. These gas springs are pretty strong because the camper allows you to store more gear on the roof. Once the roof's all the way up, you will notice a bungee around the perimeter of the tent. The functionality of this bungee is to allow the fabric to compress into itself when you're packing away the upper tent. You can simply move the bungee towards the bottom corners of the tent. Moving the bungee also gives you access to deploy the small awning off the rear window. You simply need to set up the two bendable metal rods that come with the canopy camper setup. In the next video clip, you'll see what the small rear window awning looks like deployed. You'll also notice an orange U-shaped rope. You use this rope to pull down on when putting away the upper tent portion. It does take a bit of force to pull the upper tent portion down, so this takes some getting used to. So as you can see in the next shot, you can see the upper tent portion is fully deployed alongside the rear awning window. I went ahead and also deployed the Allocab 270 degree shadow awning. The 270 degree shadow awning is a self-supporting awning that does not require support legs to be deployed. The awning does handle strong winds rather well, but if the winds get to be a bit too much for the awning to handle, there is an attached drop down leg to further stabilize the awning. There are also three webbing straps coming off each of the arms of the awning. This webbing allows you to further support the awning in stronger winds by using ground stakes. I've never had to use the additional webbing in stabilizing the awning, and I've had it in some pretty strong winds. I must admit, I still get anxious in uh, windy weather with any awning, really. There is a small gap between the awning and the rear of the canopy camper, but Allocab does offer a piece of canvas that kind of acts as a storm drain to keep rain out of the area in the rear of the camper. There's a small uh, metal bar that's underneath the canopy. I'm sorry, underneath the awning. Um, you prop this arm up and it's supposed to help with pulling of the water on the roof. Um, with that said, I still do get a bit of pulling on the roof of the awning. So I always keep an eye on this in like heavier rains. All right, so going over to the front of the setup, you might be able to uh, see the solar panels I have on the roof of the camper. I know it's hard to make out because of the glare coming off the sun, but these are two 105 watt flexible solar panels made by Sunflare. These flexible panels supply power to my house battery and are secured to the roof of the camper using Sikaflex. I also have a few crossbars installed on the roof as well. On the crossbars, I have a front runner Rotopax mount that holds my extra fuel if I need to take some on a trip. I don't really store a whole lot of stuff on the roof, but it's definitely a nice thing to have. The gas springs do support quite a bit of weight and the upper tent portion can still be deployed with stuff attached to the roof. Uh, the West Folia sticker I have on the front is kind of an homage to Volkswagen. Uh, I was growing up and uh, my grandfather is like a huge Volkswagen fan. So as many know, the West Folly is a pop-up camper van made by Volkswagen. I thought it'd be funny and quirky to install it on the camper. Um, I know I'm not the first to do it, but I figure it'd be a pretty cool thing to see. Uh, the roof rack I have installed on the roof of the truck is a custom chop front runner slimline roof rack. I had this rack installed on my truck prior to the camper and due to clearance issues, I had to get creative in making the rack functional. I mainly store firewood up here and using some climbing bolt hangers. The reason I install bolt hangers is because the eyelet bolts would always come loose in the channels of the rack when uh, I was strapping stuff down. The bolt hangers have worked much better and it's cool because they work with the M8 hardware, typically used in all front runner uh, products. Um, this is a super handy spot to just store firewood, 
and uh, smaller stuff as well. Um, so underneath the camper, there's actually a place to store a slide out table. Um, this is a cool area where the table goes as this would otherwise go as uh, just really wasted space. So it was such a good idea for Alucab to uh, do the table underneath the camper. So that kind of goes over the front of the setup. So moving to the rear of the canopy camper, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but I'll break down everything for you. Uh, starting with the rear tire. I previously had my spare tire underneath the truck and uh, recently moved it to the rear uh, door of the canopy camper. The tire was mounted underneath my truck, which hung down pretty low due to the death tank. Um, sometimes I was accidentally bashing obstacles due to the terrible departure angles of the rear tire underneath the truck. Alucab makes a rear tire mount that supports up to a 33 inch tire. Uh, the tire installed on the back of my camper is, uh, is a true 33-inch Falcon Wild Peak AT tire. Uh, this is one of the great benefits of having a rear access door with the Canopy Camper versus other pop-up campers that utilize the tailgate. The rear door is designed to carry quite a bit of weight without needing to add on a rear bumper or rear tire swing out. There are lots of people using a rear tire swing out or bumper set up with the Canopy Camper, but for me, this is, is the best setup as I don't need to go through the motions of opening a rear tire swing out just to access the rear door. Having any extra step of first moving a tire out of the way does get to be a bit cumbersome after time. Plus having the extra weight of a bumper or rear tire swing out this far back behind the axles adds a bunch of unsprung weight I'd rather not have to deal with. I do have an AEV rear bison bumper installed, which serves its purpose, but doesn't weigh a whole lot. So for me, it's a great option. I get the added protection of an OEM rear crash tested bumper designed specifically for my truck without all the weight and headaches of first having to swing a tire out of the way to access the camper. So just to the left of the rear tire, you see I have a propane mount with an 11 pound propane tank. Expedition Essentials makes this universal propane mount, and this area of the canopy camper fits the mount perfectly. The propane tank has a dual regulator installed with one side going to my Dickinson Marine fireplace and the other side connecting to a dual burner stove. The propane mount is installed directly onto the optional Alucab Molly panels. These are optional items the buyer can install on both the left or, and or right side of the rear of the canopy camper. As you can see on the right molly panel, I have a Rotopax mount installed. I sometimes mount Rotopax here as an option if I don't want to deal with getting up on the roof to where the Rotopax would be of the on the roof of the camper. So it just gives me some options. So just above the Rotopax mount, you can see a silver chimney coming out of the canopy camper. This is both the intake and the exhaust for the marine fireplace that's installed inside of the camper. I have a full video on my channel going over the Dickinson marine fireplace. So go check that video out if you're interested. There are a few major features on this camper that set it apart from other campers on the market. One of those features is the rear swing out door that comes standard on these campers. Not having to deal with a tailgate while trying to close up the camper from the inside was a huge factor that steered me towards going with this setup. The door is lockable not only from the outside, but you can sleep well at night knowing you can lock the door from the inside as well. One other key feature I really like about this camper is that it's a fully sealed setup. To my knowledge, the same canopy camper fits a range of different vehicles, but the infill kits on the bottom left and right panels of the rear of the camper are made to fit specific models of vehicles. These infill kits are what enables the camper to not only have a better sealed fitment, but it also allows the canopy camper to have the rear swing out door that sets the camper apart from others on the market. I went the extra mile and used Sikaflex to further seal my canopy camper to the rear of the truck. This prohibits water, dust, dirt from getting into the camper even offers some insulation R value as well. So one last feature um, I'd like to touch on um, in regards to the rear of the canopy camper is the door latch that's installed on the rear door. This latch is similar to what you find on one of those uh, cargo containers. Um, you can option the door to open from the left side or the right side, it's really up to you. Again, the latch is lockable for from both the outside and inside as well. All it is is a simple latch 
um, as you can see here, you just simply lift up on the handle and this disengages uh, the two latching mechanisms on the top and bottom. Quite a clever design if you ask me and a really cool feature on the door. So on the other side of the camper, I have the Expedition Essentials RBQM mount. Uh, this is their, their Max Trax mount that holds uh, four Max Trax. Um, they also make one that holds two as well. Uh, with the weight of four Max Trax, I did have to replace the stock gas springs that came with the Canadian camper with stronger ones. I made a detailed video of this mount on my YouTube channel, so if you're interested in that, go check out the video. Um, there's also um, a fold-down step that's mounted to the side of the camper as well. This is attached to the mounting channel using M8 hardware. This is typically found on sailboats. Um, it's pretty handy. It lets you get on the roof, um, easier access, nice little strong step. Uh, the last thing I'd like to cover on this side of the camper is the Alucab shower cube. Uh, this can be used in a changing room, restroom, etc. I'll show you what it looks like deployed in the next clip. So as you can see here, this is the Alucab shower cube fully deployed. Basically, it has two arms that fold out and then the material drops down. And then the access is just a zipper on the side to get into the, the change room. So now we're starting to get inside the camper. Uh, I'm gonna start with the inside of the rear door and the storage going on here. Uh, my apologies for the banding on the LED light in the video. Speaking of the light, these are National Luna LED lights. These lights have a three-way adjustment on the brightness as well as a red LED feature. The red LED is three-way adjustable as well. The Canopy Camper comes with a total of five of these lights. One on the rear door, two on both sides of the flip-up doors, one in the main cabin of the camper, and there's one up top in the ceiling near the sleeping area. Because space is at a premium in a small camper, you have to get a bit creative and use every piece of real estate available to you to make it a bit more functional. On the rear door, I have two rear Molly panels, on the upper portion of the door, as well as two stainless steel drop-down tables towards the lower portion. These rear door accessories are made by a company called GP Factor. On the upper right corner of the door, there's a gas spring as well as a limiting strap installed on the door. You can adjust this limiting strap to adjust how far you want the door to fully open. The gas spring is a nice touch as it assists the door to open softly rather than flying open when you open up the door. There are a few accessories I've added to the rear door setup as well. Starting on the upper left, I have a last US bag half caddy storage bag. I'll link the bag in the description below. Moving over to the right, you'll see like a first aid kit, fire extinguisher, and some other storage bags as well. Uh, I think I have some bear spray in there. Um, I've also installed a stainless steel paper towel holder um, I, I just bought on Amazon. It took me a while to figure out the best spot to put a paper towel holder, actually. Um, on the lower left, I uh, just have a storage pouch installed uh, with some lighters attached to it. I just used some Velcro tape to attach the bag to the bottom of the drop-down table. Um, so I'll move in a little closer uh, so you can see what the drop-down tables look like uh, deployed. Um, these are pretty useful tables, but if I had any feedback on these, I wish there was just one table. Um, I do plan on swapping these tables out for product Expedition Essentials makes in the near future. It's called the Exo Table. It has one large drop-down table and allows you to store your cook partner stove in the setup as well. I'm always looking for a good place to store my stove for easier access and having it available right where the cook table would be is pretty handy if you ask me. Moving to the entryway of the camper, you'll notice some canvas material that's rolled up towards the top. This is the Alucab canvas and mesh panels that you can install on the rear door and the two side flip up doors on either side of the camper. 
This mesh will keep you extremely small pests from entering the camper and is a great option for those that have to deal with mosquitoes in summer. The canvas is also nice to have in the winter as it adds another layer of thermal protection inside the camper. I did also want to show you what the clearance looks like with the rear door open with the rear tire attached to the door. As you can see here, the door is able to open at a fully 90 degree angle while still having enough clearance for the tire. I also wanted to show you guys what the mesh looks like when it's deployed and gives you an idea how well it integrates with the rear door of the camper. I also deployed the mesh on the side doors as well. This That canvas that's part of the system is rolled up and tucked away nicely to keep the system clean and organized. Any of you guys thinking about getting a canopy camper, I'd highly suggest getting the mesh canvas door add-ons. Just being able to hang out at camp inside the camper if you're having to deal with a lot of mosquitoes is a lifesaver. Also, the mesh allows you to get a nice cross breeze in the camper as well. One last thing I wanted to mention before going inside the camper is the added insulation I've installed inside the camper. So the perimeter of the truck bed, I have uh, installed bed rug ar around the walls of the truck bed. Uh, I ended up having some extra pieces left over after the install. So I use those extra pieces to further insulate the inside of the camper. Anywhere there was space on the door where I could attach the insulation, I did. I installed quite a bit on the inside of the two side flip up doors as well as on the rear door of the camper. Having this extra insulation makes a big difference when camping in extremely cold temperatures in the winter. It also helps to keep the inside of the camper cooler in the summer. Also, the Molly panel you see installed here is made by New Holland Overland. It's an aluminum super lightweight addition that allowed me to attach a few tools to the setup. Alucab now makes a no drill mesh panel that you can install on the inside of the door that comes with replacement gas springs to handle the extra weight. With that said, the New Holland Molly panel I have installed is so light that I didn't have to replace the gas springs on the door. These are still the stock gas springs that came with the Canopy Camper. The cool thing about this Molly panel is this is still fully functional with the canvas mesh uh, doors that Alucab offers. Um, I just make sure to leave the bottom part of the uh, mesh unzipped a little bit to give it a little clearance when I close the doors up. Now let's discuss what's going on inside the camper. I'm sure some of you watched my last walk around video of the camper have noticed a few new things. I'll briefly go over the new stuff, but I wanted to first discuss the storage setup that's inside the camper. Again, this will be somewhat of a rehash from the last video, but I'll try and explain things with a bit more detail. So for the storage inside the camper, it's made by a company called Goose Gear. They're based in Southern California and make all kinds of cool stuff like custom cabinetry, kitchen setups, and rear vehicle drawer setups as well. They specifically make setups for the canopy camper. And what you see here is their storage cabinets option that they make. They do offer drawer solutions for the canopy camper as well. So there are a total of four storage cabinets. They only offer access to the cabinets from the top of the storage compartments. They do not currently offer any kind of access from the face of the cabinets. Uh, these right here are the access points from the top of the storage cabinets. They are lockable lids with a very well made latch to give you access. I really like these storage cabinets as they are extremely lightweight and offer great storage to keep things organized and out of the way in the living space of the camper. I chose not to go with the drawers due to the extra weight and they do slightly impede into the main hallway of the camper uh, by the rear door. I wanted to keep this area fully open. Also, another cool feature of not having the drawers is that you're able to use those drop-down GP factor tables that are located on the door inside the camper. If you had the drawers installed, you could not use those drop-down tables inside the camper. So now I'll go over what's kind of in each of the cabinets. So on the one directly on my left is a Battleborn 100 amp hour battery. Uh, the one in the rear here is uh, where my water pump is stored and anything else that can get wet. Uh, the one to my right in the rear is all my recovery gear. Um, and anything that can get really dirty stays in there. And then to my right is where all my cooking gear, utensils, and things like that are stored. 
So Goose Gear builds the foundations of their cabinets using 8020 hardware. The great thing about 8020 is that it's lightweight and extremely modular. Thinking a rector set for adults. Um, 8020 is a US based company, but I'm pretty sure there's products on the market internationally that offer something similar. Um, you can get pretty creative and come up with ideas on how to use the 8020 extrusion. Uh, one of these uh, creative things I kind of came up with is uh, designing a lagoon style um, RV swivel table that uses uh, all 8020 hardware. Um, I really wanted a centralized table for when uh, I'm inside the camper. We use the table as a workspace, um, as a place to eat, and a centralized gaming table for checkers and stuff like that. If you are interested in knowing more about this table, go check out my other video on my channel that gives you a full breakdown of how the table is built and designed. So one other idea was uh, making the goose gear system a bit more functional for me was the uh, marine style access hatch as you see here. Um, as I mentioned, I do store all my kitchen gear inside of the storage cabinet and having to reach in from the top to access these items was a bit cumbersome. I got an idea from a guy on Instagram that goes by Moonman Overland. He did a custom interior cabin install on his canopy camper and used these hatches in a similar way. It gave me an idea to adapt this hatch to the goose gear cabinets. This gives me much quicker access to my kitchen stuff uh, and also remains a bit more minimalistic and a much lighter option compared to the drawers that they offer. The hatch is made from a company called DPI Marine, which I'll link down in the description below. They do offer a range of sizes on their hatches and the quality is pretty good. I did have to provide my own stainless steel hardware uh, bolts for the install. But the biggest <laughs> nerve wracking thing I had to do was cut a hole into the goose gear setup. In the end, it was super simple to do. And the install was pretty straightforward. The only thing I'm not a big fan of are the latches, but I can live with those. I would say the hardest thing to do is to measure properly and just try to figure out which hatch was the best size to use in this application. Um, now, here in just a sec, I'll actually open up the latch and kind of give you an idea of what's inside. So as you can see, these turn, um, they're not the greatest quality, like I said, but they do function properly. And you can see what I have installed in there. I have like, uh, you know, some Clorox wipes. I have, uh, oh, this is my front runner uh, cutlery set. Um, there's nothing that presses up against the door, so it didn't have to be insanely strong. Oh, this is my um, my Stanley pot set there. So kind of gives you an idea of what I have access to. It's just a lot better than going in from the top to get to my kitchen stuff. Um, again, it's just a lot more convenient. Moving on on top of the Goose Gear storage cabinets are these... Uh, these uh, box cushions. I actually do make these box cushions as I mentioned in my last video. Um, I make these custom for people. I've made a few orders already. Um, the thing is, if you'd like to place an order for these, um, I do make them. Uh, they're not cheap. So I use all top grade materials. I use Sunbrella canvas, uh, which is antimicrobial, stain resistant, etc. I use antimicrobial foam. So these are kind of a marine style cushion for the camper. Again, I make them for any application you want, usually outdoor. And the thing is, is I don't cut corners and try to use cheaper materials. So um, I do make these. If you'd like these, let me know um, and I can make you a set. Um, I, again, I have made a set. I have made a few sets for people already and they're really enjoying them. So yeah, so going to the back of the camper, um, that's my ARB fridge. I typically have one of these guys sitting on top of the fridge, so it's another place to sit. Um, I forgot it, so it typically just sits on top, and that's just another place to sit down. Um, the cool thing about the ARB fridge right there, if any of you guys are thinking about getting this, it actually shoves a little bit underneath the support bracket for the water tank, so you're able to kind of push that uh, fridge back a little bit further when you're in transport if you need a little bit of extra storage room. Moving to the rear of the camper, you see this, the white thing in the back, that's a 13 gallon water tank that sits against the bulkhead. It's such a great place to put a water tank because not only is it out of the way, but it's on the bulkhead in front of the axles. So you can't really feel that weight when you have it filled up. Um, and if I didn't mention it, it is a 13 gallon water tank, which is awesome. 
I do have a SureFlow water pump connected to it. Uh, some people just do a gravity flow and that works too. Whatever works for you, the cool thing about this setup is you can do whatever you want. So next we're gonna hop inside the camper and show you a different view from where I'm standing. Now hopping into the canopy camper, you can see the water tank here. I have a few things stored here. I have like a jacket and a hammock and some sponges, uh, a chair here. Just wanted to show you the water fill, which is here. And the way they mount that is just super secure. Just a smart way to do it. Now, as you can see here, I do have a few items stored up here, an extra blanket and this whiteboard. I actually have a projector a portable projector that I take with me. Uh, we like to watch movies inside the canopy camper. And so I'll set this, I'll set this, um, let me show you guys. I'll set this white foam board here and then sit the projector behind me and we'll be able to kind of sit down and watch movies inside the canopy camper when we don't want to use the iPad. It's kind of cool. Open up a little bit from the water tank. Um, You'll see I have a little prep space here if I need it. Um, this, this one's made by Goose Gear. Um, they don't typically make these. Uh, this was made as a prototype as this model canopy camper was built as a prototype model from a OK four wheel drive. Um, so they built this as a prototype. I don't think they currently make this as I mentioned in a previous video. But again, this is just a nice piece to have, you know, if you want to make coffee or whatever in the morning. Now we're facing the other way in the canopy camper. I'm sitting where the fridge is, um, just to kind of give you an idea of what the other side looks like. So I'll just kind of pan here. Um, I did close the door, as you can see there. It is locked. Just wanted to kind of give you a view of what that looks like. There's some extra storage cabinets. I'll go over all this here in just a minute. And this is the uh, electrical panel. So just pan around here. There's another win window there. There's one here and there's one on this side. So let's hop into the electrical panel first. Um, I already had mentioned that my lithium iron 100 amp hour battery is in here. So it made sense to put that battery there because of the electrical panel, which is located here. Just a brief rundown. I run a, a Red Arc uh, 40 amp uh, charger. This defaults to solar. So um, if I'm driving or posted up at camp and it can pull in green energy, it defaults to like a green charging profile. Um, if there's no solar, if it's cloudy or whatever, as I'm driving, it'll, uh, my truck has a small alternator in it. So it will charge the house battery, uh, properly as I'm driving. Uh, here is a Victron battery monitor. I can use a Bluetooth app on my phone to monitor the status of my battery, what's going in and out. Um, and then here is the panel, the main switch panel for all everything power related in, in the camper. So this controls everything from lights, USB chargers to water pump, lights, I already said that, fans, fridge, etc. I also have some few USB and a 12 volt cigar lighter, uh, installed here. Um, so a lot of people ask, uh, as far as electrical goes, this comes, this setup does come up, set up with electrical, this canopy camper. Um, there's also some uh, USB ports and 12 volt, as well as uh, stock lights as well. Um, this is in addition to the national aluminum lights that, that the camper comes with. And again, that's on each side. So the same stock lights that was on this side is on this side. Uh, now going up here, this is a flip down extended bed portion um, that you can use kind of as a table or however you'd like. I'll go into the detail about that. I just wanted to give you reference of what that did. Um, I have Blue Ridge Overland gear uh, pouches uh, Velcro to the bottom of this. So this is for uh, my partner's uh, stuff on her side. This is stuff on my side. And then we keep all the card games and stuff like that in here. Uh, there's a carbon monoxide detector uh, thermometer. And I also have some thermometers located on the zippers as well. Uh, so right now, 75 degrees in here. It's not too bad. 52% humidity. 
So again, storage and space in this is at a premium. So you got to kind of get creative as far as uh, where you want to put your stuff. Um, so this is a 12 volt uh, marine fan and I'll go ahead and turn that on because uh, it is a little warm in here. Go ahead and turn that on. So as you can see, that's powered and you can kind of tilt that however you want, up, down. Uh, the cool thing about having a fan right there is it the, the fireplace does come with a built-in fan to help disperse some of the heat around the camper, but this helps even more. So the fan, it's not affected by the, the fireplace at all, but the fan does help disperse some of that heat coming off the fireplace. So again, that's the Dickinson Marine Fireplace. I've done a video on that, like I've mentioned before. Go check that out if you want to know more details. Um, and since I did install the mesh and canvas from Alucab on this window recently, I went ahead and installed a heat barrier just in case uh, the heat output out of the fireplace is, is, is going to affect the mesh here. I don't think it would have, but I just made this heat block i believe this material is rated for up to like 500 degrees or 1000 degrees or something um, that way it just kind of protects the mesh and the canvas from the fireplace it's just an insert and it's just part of the window and it's just it can be easily removed so that was an addition that um i added recently as well so just kind of for a little bit of safety so now i'm going to stand up i'm actually standing up inside the camper kind of give you a view here so as you can see the bed is here so it's different than what's a lot available on the market for a lot of the campers whereas they have those things that just kind of slide around this whole bed platform pushes up and follows the profile of the roof so and I'll show you here in a minute how how you get into the bed but also there's this portion here if you're need a little bit more space while you're up in the bed. I'm six foot two and can fit just in the main portion of the bed, but if you need a little bit more extra room, you can fold this part down as well. I never really use this. I use this mainly as a table or a bench or my dog wants to hang out, I'll throw him up here. But now uh, the next one I'll show you guys with the bed deployed. Okay, so now I'm outside the camper. I just kind of wanted to show you how you would get into bed. So basically I'm going back in the camper and then right now I have the bed folded in a down position, just the main part. The other part is still up. So the main part is down. So you just get up here and hop into bed. So as you can see, you got windows here. You got some pockets here for storage, magazines, what have you. There's another one of those national lunar lights on the ceiling. You can see there I have some Velcro. I throw an iPad there. That way, when the lady and I are inside the bed and we want to watch a video, it's a great place to put an iPad so you don't have to hold it while you're in bed. So now I'm in the roof or the attic of the canopy camper. Um, just kind of want to show you reference here of what it looked like. So I leave this uh, upper portion up. I uh, don't really need it as an extension to sleep. If you're a little bit taller, you might need to fold it down. Um, this typically does come with a mattress as well. Um, I remove mine because I don't really need it. I don't use it as a mattress. Uh, my dog sleeps downstairs. So I'll go ahead and lift this back up. And kind of give you, so as far as the mattress goes in the Canopy Camper, um, I do use the Exped mattress, what a lot of people use. I mean, they make such good mattresses. Uh, I use their, their Duo. Uh, it's the green one. Uh, it works great. It's so comfortable. It's probably more comfortable than, than my bed at home. And then, yeah, this gives you a little bit of reference to what the bed looks like. Um, I just have a sheet thrown down, and we use a few. Um, uh, my partner, she uses a sleeping bag, a proper sleeping bag. I typically just like these uh, down blankets. This is like a Sierra Designs blanket. And down blanket and then there's some extra blankets in the back there this fits pretty much all of our uh, bedding up here without us needing to store it elsewhere uh, we can close this thing and not have any issues and just have it always stay up here that's another cool thing about the canopy camper you don't have to 
take any of your bedding out. You just keep it up here. When you're ready to go to bed, pop the top and you're good to go. Now I'm out of the bed. Just want to kind of show you what it looks like to put the bed up. So if you want to get up and hang out in the camper, you just push this up. It moves the whole entire bed out of the way. And now you have a place to stand, hang out. Um, these windows, let me change the, these windows here, they are, uh, you know, canvas mesh, you know, fully open if you'd like that as well. Um, the cool thing about this canvas, it is blackout canvas, so you can get some good Z's if you're the per kind of person that likes to sleep in in the mornings. All right, that about wraps it up. Uh, thanks for checking out the video, guys. Uh, and I uh, appreciate your comments and uh, feedback on the last one. I don't think I would have made a second video on this setup if it wasn't for you guys giving me some feedback. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or something I might have missed, hopefully I didn't, uh, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, anything else you guys want to see as far as uh, walk-arounds of gear I have or my truck or... Uh, whatever just let me know in the comments below and um i'll be sure and uh get those videos made for you guys again appreciate you guys checking out the videos